Okay, now I'm in my third video explaining um, using Excel to uh, solve the Carnival Dice game problem. Um, now, since uh, the last video, I've gone in and I've cleaned up uh, my, uh, my second Excel page here a bit from where I ended up last time. And um, I did it to make it easier to read. Um, now, um, if you're like how I uh, have been my entire life, I'm not interested in making things neat. I've always been interested in getting the answer as quickly as possible so that I could move on. And um, But if you're doing something that you may want to go back and look at later, um, it really does help to make it neat and, and self-explanatory and fairly obvious as to what you're trying to do. Uh, because um, it's just like you write a piece of computer software. If you don't comment it, you can come back a few months later, a year later, 10 years later, however long, and you look at it and you think, oh my goodness, what was I trying to do here? And, and it takes you a long time to go back and piece everything together. So in the end, I have, uh, I have found it to be useful to try to make things um, as neat and self-explanatory as possible, especially if you're doing something that you, know, you might be giving me to grade. It's in your best interest to do that. Now, uh, if you, so let's go back here for a minute and just look at some of these things here that I've done. Um, you can change the width of your columns just by an Excel sheet, just by going up and, and moving these things like that. So, uh, for example, I can change that width there, and uh, I could change this width here. Uh, this one I could bring in. Uh, well, the thing is I have to look at what happens down here can't really bring this in too much because or I'll start running the, the this off of the pay off of the cell out of the cell this one I can bring in a little bit more if I wanted to like that maybe that's a little too much something like that so you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here okay now um, so like I said it's really worthwhile to try to make things as clear as possible um, one thing that you should um, learn about uh, Excel copy and paste that if I, ex if I uh, copy a whole range of cell uh, contents such as this, I'll click on this, click on six, okay, and then I, uh, I, I want to um, not just copy it, but I want to uh, uh, copy it and then uh, move it somewhere else. So I want to delete all this when I when I copy it. So I execute that statement, which on my Macs is Command X, and it's probably something similar on your PCs. So I do Command X, and you see I get this uh, uh, set of ants that are moving around. And then I click where else I want to put it on the page. So I would click here, and then I put my paste, and the whole thing moves down, just like that. But I don't really want it down here. I want to keep it back up here where I had it. So I click, click, um, copy and extract, move up here, copy and paste, and there it does that. So that uh, is a convenient way. Remember, if you cut something out and then you place it somewhere else, it pretty much goes back uh, and... Um, uh, the way you, you want it to go back and, and you don't have to make a lot of changes in it. Okay, now, um, with that, um, we if you recall, what we did was we uh, looked at the three dice, what we call our red, green, and blue dice, and we looked at all possible combinations. Let's say if we're doing the red dice versus the green dice, um, then um, what uh, 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 we look at all possible combinations of red and green and see who wins. Then we would count up the number of times that green wins. I just put the letter G and the letter R for whoever wins. Like So green gets a three, red gets a one, green wins. If red gets a five, green gets a three, red wins. And then I had this little uh, 
um, little Excel um, formula in here that actually counted up the number of green wins. And all I did was a formula that I produced uh, counts up the number of G times G appears in this column from here to here. And that's what this statement does right here. So I count up the number of G's to get four, count up the number of reds to get five. Over here, I count up the number of B's for blue to get five, and so on. Now, so this gave me the somewhat counterintuitive result um, that I said, okay, if I'm always rolling the red dice against the green one, uh, on average, when red wins five to four, if I'm all, always running uh, the blue against the red, on average, blue wins five to four. So blue beats red, red beats green. I would expect that blue would beat green, but that doesn't happen. When I look at the comparison between blue and green here, I get, surprisingly, that green wins almost, or not almost, it wins exactly twice as often as blue wins. So uh, and this so this is the basis between a uh, uh, what uh, a game sometimes found called carnival dice because people would play it in the carnival, and um, so uh, now over here what I did was I generated uh, the results of doing random rolls. So if I uh, do if I were to actually roll the red dice and see what numbers showed up. Uh, I would expect each number, 2, 5, and 9, to occur one-third of the time. And I used the random number generator um, in Excel to help me do that computation. So this generates a random integer, either 0, 1, or 2. And then this looks at the result. If we roll a 0, uh, the result is we output a 1. So if the roll on this if this number down here, if this number is less than 1, so if it's a 0, then we print out this value, which is a 1. If this number is not less than 1, in other words, if it's a 1 or a 2, and then we don't print out 1. What we do is we execute this if statement. Now this says, well, is a number uh, less than 2. So that means uh, it would be a 1 or a 0, but we've ruled out all the 0 cases when we filtered this out here. So this, even though this says a2 less than 2, this is only looking at values of a2 that are either 1 or 2. And so if it's a 1, we output a 5. If it's not a 1, which means it has to be a 2, then we output a 9. So that's how we generate these numbers here. So. If you don't quite follow this, um, you know, think about it for a little bit. Uh, so this checks to see if it's a zero. If it's not a zero, this checks to see if it's either a one or a two. So then we output that. We do the same thing rolling the blue dice. Uh, here's our, our random numbers, one, zero, and two. Here's our dice value of two, six, or seven. We do the same thing for the green dice. Here are the random values of zero, one, and two. Here's three or four or eight. And then we look and see who wins in each um, a competition. Red versus blue. Okay, red is less than blue, so blue wins. Red versus green. Okay, here we see that red is less than green, so green wins. And, and then we look at blue versus green. So in that case, uh, we have uh, blue is greater than green, so that means that, that blue wins. So this is how we do this computation. Now what I want to do here is in each one of these uh, uh, columns, I want to count the number of times that blue wins and red wins. Here I want to count the number of times that green wins and red wins, and so on down here. Now something that makes this a little bit more complicated is over here all I was doing was seeing the number of times that a single letter appeared in the in a cell, and there was only one letter in the cell. Made it pretty easy. Here, over here, the cells have entire words, so the number of letters in each cell is different. So, if I did what I did over here, for example, here I'm counting the number of greens or the number of G's. 
when I do this, I'm using this, which is looking at the number of cells that have um, um, the, the length of the word. This is length. When I do the length of M2 to M10, I'm looking the, at the length of the number of characters in the word at M2, number of characters in word in, in cell M3, and so on. And then I'm subtracting from that. I, what I do is I delete the character G. So substitute, what this is doing is if G appears in the word in M2, it deletes G and replaces it by nothing. Okay, so it eliminates the character G. So it, that gets counted as a, if, if G appeared, and now after deleting the G, there's no G. So this is uh, then deleting all the, all of the, uh, the count, deleting every count that would have had the G before. Now we're only counting uh, the R's. So when we take the difference between the numbers of R's and G's and subtract from that the number of G's, what we're left with is just the number of R's. And then conversely, we looked at the number of R's and G's and subtract from that just the number of R's, we are left with the number of G's. Okay, so now, um, so what do I do? I have a whole word here. And each word has a, has a, has a different length. Red is three characters, blue is four characters, green is five characters. Um, so if I wanted to specifically delete uh, the word, I mean, I could do that, but then I have to remember to take into account the fact that each word has a different number of characters, and it can get pretty complicated. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to look for one character that only appears in the word blue, and one character that only appears in the word green, and one character that only appears in the word red. So I'm going to look through each cell. For example, if I want to count the number of blue wins, the number of cells that have the word blue in it, I go through every cell, and if there's a B in it, I just delete B. So I delete one B for each time the word blue appears. So the number of Bs that are deleted is the same as the number of blue wins. So you got that? So that's what I want to do here. So what I want to do is use this same formula that I used here, okay, except of course the cell range is going to be different. And the cell range is going to be different. And then in addition to that, the uh, uh, I'm only deleting uh, at most uh, one letter per word, depending on which particular word I'm looking for. So let's look then at how we would execute, let's say down here, and count the number of times that red appears and count the number of times that blue appears. So I'm going to do that right over here. I'm going to look at uh, um, probability red wins or something of that sort. Probability table, blue wins. So let me, let me uh, do what I did up here and let me merge these two cells. Format, cells, merge cells, okay. Do the same thing here. Um, format, cells, merge cells. So these are going to be my results for the uh, red versus blue table. Well, let me write here, red versus blue. Red v blue, or I could write it out, red versus blue. And then I'll type blue wins. Okay, red versus blue, blue wins. And I'll make this red versus blue, um, red wins. Now, it seems to me that writing out the whole word isn't really all that useful. So I'm just going to write like this. Red v blue. Should be pretty clear. Red v blue, blue wins. 
Now here I write red, the blue, red wins. There. Okay. Now I have that. Now I have to put that formula in that's going to count the number of blue wins. And um, so, now how do I do that here? Number of blue wins. I mean, so let me just look at this formula. I'm going to look at the formula right here. I'm going to copy this formula, just like that. Copy. Okay. Now, let me just escape from that. And I'm going to put right here, like this. I'm going to paste the formula right there. Now, it's giving me the same number I've had here because it's exactly that same formula. But what I want to do now is I want to change the range here. I want to change the range from G3, let's say, to G32. G3 to G32. Okay, so how am I going to do that? G3 G3 to G32 Do the same thing here G3 to G32. And um, if I'm counting the number of blue wins, I want to delete red. Let's try that, replacing that G. Now, what letter appears in red that doesn't appear in blue and green? The letter R. So I count the number of R's in there should be counting the number of, of blue wins or red wins. That counts the number of red wins. So I want to make it B. So I want to look at the only deleting the letter B uh, whenever it appears in the column over here from here to here. Okay. So I go back up here and I hit return and I'm getting 17. Now, let's do the same thing for red wins. So, let me take this formula and copy it. Copy. And um, escape. I'll go here. This formula, paste. And now I want to replace the B with an R. Hit return. That gives me... Um, Red wins. Now that's saying I have 30. Well, do I have 30 elements in the column? That's the first thing I'm going to check. Red versus blue. I go from row 3 to row 32. So row 3 to row 32. It's not 32 minus 3. It's actually 32 minus 3 plus 1. So that is, should add up to 30. You know, if you just count. All the way down, you should count up 30 rows. So this is giving me then what I expect to get here. Now, let me do the same thing uh, with the um, other two. So here's those blue wins just a little bit more than red. So when I do red versus blue, what is this telling me? This is indeed telling me the blue wind is just a little bit more than red. So this answer here, which is, which is a result of a random experiment, which may or may not comply exactly with this, but this seems to be about right, doesn't it? Okay, now let me do under here, um, let's say the, the other two contests, the other two probabilities here. So I'll go right here. I'm going to merge these cells. So, format, cells, merge cells. Okay, here, format, cells, 
merge cells. Okay. And then, um, so I'm going to do this as RV blue. So that's this, this RV blue, what I'm saying. So as I do uh, red versus green. So let me do that. Red versus green. Red versus green. Red versus green, I should have red wins, right? That's what the this analysis tells me, red wins. And then so we should get more red wins here. And now here, let me do red versus green, red versus green, blue wins. Okay. Notice that every time I hit the return, what it does is it regenerates a whole other set of random variables. And this, so here I got, wow, blue winning a lot more than red on, on this particular um, uh, column of numbers. We'll get, we can go back and look at that in a minute. Okay, now I want to do red versus green. Now, red versus green, blue can't win. Only, only green can win. Okay, so I want to avoid that mistake. Green wins. Okay, so let me copy this formula here. There. Copy, escape. I'm going to paste it right in here. Okay, so now a couple things change though. The columns that I'm looking for, which is red versus green, that's column H. So all of my G's should be changed to H. 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 And then my B, since I'm looking for blue wins, blue, it stays blue. So I should be able to do return there, return. Oh, no, uh, uh, that was st stupid. Okay, yeah, of course, I, I'm looking for green, not blue. So uh, green wins, I want to take out green. Green, now hit return. So this should give me the number of green wins. Now I want to copy that and find the number of red wins. Copy here. paste, um, and I want to do the number of red wins, so I'll make that an R there, hit return. So, okay, it's given me 30. Well, that can't be right. Red versus green, red wins is 30. So what am I doing wrong? H3 versus H32. Ah, you know what it is. R appears both in green and red, so it counts every element in here. I only want something that appears in green and not in red. So um, uh, here for red wins, I have to do a different letter. So let me try the letter D. There. There. Okay. So this is red wins, green wins, red wins, blue wins. Okay. So far, so good. Now let me merge these two cells. Format, cell, merge cells, OK. Format, cell, merge cells, OK. Now I want to do green versus blue. Green versus blue. Green wins. And then I want to do green versus blue.
Bluelands. Okay. Now, again, use my same formula. Here, let me just, uh, I think I, I already have it uh, copied, so let me just click here, and I will copy it. Now, green wins, looking for G, that should, uh, now the only thing I have to change is the, uh, the listing, this is blue versus green, the column should go from H to I, so I put an I here, I, 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 I. And for green, I'll take out the G, so that should count the number of greens. I hit return, I have 16. Okay, now I will copy that. Copy, escape, now I'll put down blue, and I should be able to count the number of Bs, because B also doesn't appear in G. B, there, hit return, so I have the number of blues. So, um, so now this is looking at the results of these random data right in here. Okay, this is um, on each contest, red versus blue, doing 30 rolls of the dice. This is telling us, uh, telling us on this particular experiment that uh, blue wins here. Um, 19 uh, uh, to, to, to 11. So when I do red versus blue, blue should have a, sh a slight edge. So that's consistent with that. When I do red versus green, wet, red should have a slight edge. So this is consistent. And when I do blue and green, we said that green should really uh, win big time has a slight edge here, okay? But bo all three of these results are consistent with these probability calculations. If I ran a separate, another case, every once in a while I would get a case which is in, uh, in opposition. So I could run a case where green wins and run a case where red wins here and so on. So um, let me, uh, let me, let's say, make these colors here, blue, here, let me make this blue right in here. So I make that blue. So I'll do, here's blue, make this green, make that green, make this green, make that green, make this red, red, make this green, and make this blue, okay, so I can look at this data right in here, and I can immediately see um, blue wins versus green wins, red wins versus uh, green wins, and so on. So here we have red winning a whole lot more than green. Number of red wins, green wins, that's consistent. Here we have blue winning a whole lot more than red, that's consistent. Now we have green uh, still only barely beating out blue. Okay, so uh, that's one way we can look at the data. Now we're only doing uh, 30 rolls of the die here. We could drag these things down and do 100. Uh, and then we have to change our ranges here a bit. So let's just do that as one more uh, example here. So what I want to do right in here, I want to go from here all the way down to here, or I could just do the last one, do here to here. And then I want to drag this all the way down to, we're starting at cell 3. So I'm going to go all the way down to 102. I, if I've done that correctly in my head. So I drag this down. 102. 
Okay, so this should be giving me the number of red, blue, and green wins. Now over here, I sh it probably still only adds up to 30, right? So I want to change all the ranges, uh, the top end of the range, to, to 102. Okay, so I look at up here. So I don't want to do G32. I want to do G102. Here I want to do G G102. Hit return. Now, this for some reason, this is taking, okay, we're going to place 102 here. One oh two, and then I want to go over here and do one hundred and two. Okay, so this why is it telling me I can't do it? Oh, I've got three here, that's why. Didn't take out the three. Now hit return. So this should add up to 100, and it does. Now let me do the same thing with these two. Okay, this right here, 32 to 102. 102 here, 102, return. Same thing down here, this one. 102. And here, 102. Return. This adds up to 100, right? Same thing here, 102. And over here, 102. Hit return. Now here, 102, and here, 102, there. So each of these now should add up uh, to 100. Um, so it's more uh, likely now, because I'm rolling a die 100 times, that I would get, for example, between blue and green, I should get green wins. But here, notice uh, blue and green, where is that? Uh, blue and green, um, I'm getting still slightly more green wins, okay, than red wins. Um, and so it makes me wonder if there's a mistake over here because my probability keeps coming in, you know, um, not quite as good. And now I get, um, uh, red uh, versus green, uh, red versus green, I should get a slightly higher number of red wins than I do, and then red versus blue, I should get a slightly higher number of blue wins, which I do. Okay, so uh, that's that uh, for now. Uh, you might want to look over this. You can check to see, have I made any mistakes? Like, I'm thinking, gee, this, these numbers here on blue versus green don't quite look right to me. Um, and uh, so what's happening with that? And uh, so that's, uh, that's my uh, number three for Carnival Dice.